So he brings down these two tablets. He's shining with glory. Here's the rules. They didn't obey the rules. They didn't care at all. And so life has been going on and the same rules people are trying to follow and they can't. This isn't a list of do's and don'ts. When Jesus came, he said, okay, here's what I'm doing. I'm taking all these laws, all these commandments, all these prophets, all of them, 613 laws and 10 commandments. I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna sum them up into two. Every one of them. Are you with me? Now, here's the two laws, the royal law of liberty, the royal law of love, and I'm gonna make it very simple for you. But unless you obey both of these, none of these will help you. Nothing will help you. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. No, wait, it's gotta be harder than that. No, no, no. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Gotta be more complicated than that, come on. Give us something like harder. No, 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 Jesus says, what must we, they said to Jesus, what must we do to work the works of God? Believe in the one he sent. No, wait, come on. Are you kidding? No, what must we do? Believe. (sighs) Yeah, but what must we do? Believe. Stop it. Do believe. Do believe. Do believe. You gotta see this. It's not complicated, it's simple. We complicate it. We're taught to jump through hoops our whole life. If we don't believe, The miracles can still flow in your life. You can still do miracles and not believe. You can shipwreck your faith but still heal the sick. You shipwreck your faith of of, uh, the best, most amazing thing about faith to me is me being not guilty, is me being not ashamed, is me being not condemned. You can't condemn me, I'm not guilty. You can't shame me, I'm unshameable. You can't condemn me, I am uncondemnable. I was a guilty, condemned man. I was ashamed. Jesus came. He knew that I was twisted. He knew I was a sinner. He knew I was whacked. He came to set me free from that bondage. I am not a slave of fear, again. Fear. Because certain fiery indignation and judgment awaits me because I'm living a twisted life and know that I'm walking on eggshells. One day, my sin is gonna find me out. That's no way to live your Christian life. Jesus paid more of a price than to get us to live that way. He paid a price to set us free from ourselves so that we could finally be free to set you free from trying to obey the law to be okay. Here's the law, love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul. What is your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions? How can I love God with all my soul? That means that your mind, your will, and your emotions need to love God. How can my emotions love God if I'm still twisted in guilt? How can my emotions love God? How can my soul love God if I'm still not believing the price that he paid is enough? Jesus paid a price to set me free from being guilty, free from being ashamed, where I can look in the mirror and like what I see. Not because of my hair. Not because of the color of my eyes, but because somebody chose to live in me when I was unlovable. When I was twisted and lost, somebody said, not guilty. When the world wrote me off, God wrote me in. But no matter who you are, it's the same for all of you. The problem was if I don't believe I'm forgiven, I can't love. Because love is the byproduct of forgiven. You have this lady in Luke 7 that busts into the house. 
She can't hold back. She's gonna break into a Pharisee's house. This lady is a sinner and twisted and is not welcome. She is unclean to those Pharisees. She is detestable in their sight. She runs in, she sees Jesus, she busts in. She breaks a year's worth of salary in fragrant oil. She anoints Jesus' feet. She can't hold back any longer. And the Bible says that this will never be taken out. This twisted of twisted people runs into the room and Simon the Pharisee's in there having a meal with Jesus. They're reclining at the table. She's like, hair. And Simon reasoned in this. This man really were who he says he is. He would never let this woman who is a sinner touch him. Jesus says, Simon, he said he knew what they were thinking. He knew what they were reasoning in their hearts. So he says, Simon, Simon, suppose you have two. One owed a master millions and another owed a master hundreds. The master knew that neither could repay, so he freely forgave them both. Which one of these would be more loved. Well, it's easy, that's money. The one whom he forgave more. You know what? You're right. And this woman's sins, who are many. Because she's been forgiven much, she will love much. So crazy. Like Simon had less to be forgiven of. Your revelation of the cross and forgiveness, your revelation of Jesus' forgiveness of you is in direct proportion to the actual love that you have in this world towards others, towards yourself. We're gonna go after righteousness with everything we are. Regardless, I don't care how long it takes you to get it, because once you get it, you'll reproduce it. Because every seed reproduces after its own kind. And when you see that you are a tree or an oak that the Lord calls righteousness. When you see that you're an oak of righteousness. When you see that you're an oak of righteousness and you're planted with roots that go down deep into his love. It's over for the enemy whispering to you. When you see that Romans 6 says that righteousness produces its fruit unto holiness, the fruit that hangs on your tree is holy fruit. The same seed that's in that fruit the same kind of tree that you are. And a good tree can't bear bad fruit. And a bad tree can't bear good fruit. The purity of God, and the reality of who he's called you to be, is because you've earned it. Jesus paid it all. Jesus did it for you. 